Nutria have had a pretty big impact on some uh, habitat restoration projects. Mm -hmm. um, e even here in Eugene, where you look at the, the uh, Delta wetlands area in, in uh, downtown Eugene there, there's been a lot of habitat restoration work and the city's gone in and tried to reestablish native vegetation and they've had a lot of problems from Nutria coming in and eating that vegetation and killing it and preventing it from getting established. So you have, uh, and, and the city of Albany's had the same issues with some habitat restoration projects they've done. Uh, you've also got problems with uh, safety and dike stability. Uh, when you look at the Eugene Water and Electric Board, they've got a, a canal that directs water to some power generation facilities mm -hmm. and Nutria boreholes, uh, bore dens into that canal bank and potentially then cause a, a safety issue if that canal were to give way and break because of those uh, th those nutrients. And a number of these ponds here, um, quite a few nutria walking around and uh, causing water quality problems, uh, degrading habitat through their burrowing and affecting vegetation. And you know, these urban creeks are, are some of the kind of refuges for native fish and wildlife that don't have too many, too many places to access. Nutria, huge hungry 20 pound rodents native to South America, have been wreaking environmental havoc for years. And on Maryland's eastern shore, a team of wildlife biologists and trappers is working to stop the invasive critter from gobbling up wetlands. From a regional perspective, this project is important to the health of the Chesapeake Bay. From a national perspective, the techniques that we're developing here are ap applicable in other parts of the country where similar types of uh, ecological damage are taking place. Nutria are perfect eating machines, with webbed feet, hand-like paws, strong front teeth, and a head nearly one-third of its total body size. Fur traders brought the species to North America in the 1930s, but the pelts never caught on, and many of the animals that were brought to Louisiana, Florida, Oregon, and Maryland either escaped or were released. Pretty much wherever Nutria have become established, they've become a problem in the U.S. One such problem area is along the Chesapeake Bay. I recently visited the Deal Island Management Area in southeastern Maryland to see firsthand how these animals can devastate the environment and what's being done to stop them. This is pretty fresh on probably last night. Yesterday. Oh yeah. Nutria scat is one of the, the key indicators that we've got a, an active infestation uh, as opposed to a, an old eat out. An eat out is just what it sounds like. An area where nutria have literally eaten away the vegetation. In contrast to native muskrats, which feed a little bit here and there, nutria settle in one location and stay there until nothing's left. Then they move outward creating massive eat-outs visible from above. This marsh supports you know, all the birds that you hear and see flying around you and fish and crabs and everything. And you can see right from where we're standing probably eight or ten different species of, of marsh plants. One of these plants is called Three Square, a key species in this habitat. It's just a single stalk plant that uh, is very important as a food for lots of different species. Uh, waterfowl eat the seeds. Muskrats use the stalks to build houses out of to protect them in the winter. And it happens to be one of the most preferred food species for nutria as well. Three square and other marsh plants form an interconnected web of roots that hold together the soil underneath, keeping the marsh from eroding with the tides. This root mat is so thick, you can easily walk on top of it. We're starting to see a little bit of damage here. This is the, the kind of initial feeding uh, activity that we'll see when nutria move into an area. And this is the kind of digging they do. I mentioned they dig up the root mat and here are little pieces of it that they've dug up and, and chewed on the roots and tubers. When the tide moves in, these tattered remains get swept away, leaving an unstable, mucky hole where a marsh used to be. All of this stuff I'm walking in right now is erodible. It's, it's mud, essentially. And without the roots of those plants to bind it together, it's highly vulnerable to disappearing. That's what happened at the nearby Blackwater National Wildlife Refuge. Nutria invaded and wiped out more than half the marsh there. In the mid-1990s, the Maryland Department of Natural Resources teamed up with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and other federal agencies to assess the nutria problem in the refuge. By 2004, Trappers had killed about 10,000 rodents, and Blackwater was declared virtually nutria-free. Now, 